Hey, what's up guys? Uh, Zero One here. Today I'm going to be discussing to you about the Bible, the Word of God. 66 books, more than 4,000 years old, and 40 authors. Now, to me, the Word of God is more than just historical, spiritual knowledge. It's more than just a good book. It is a way of life. It is a, a way to me. It's a way for me to understand the heart of God. And I know a lot of people might, uh, are saying, "How do you know it's the Word of God?" Because there's so many religious texts out there, and there's so many different religions that are based off of the Bible. And there's other different religions out there. Now, I don't have a lot of time to explain a go into detail about why I believe the, that the Bible is the Word of God. But what I can say from my personal experience is that it always, always comes to pass. One good example is Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody can come to the Father without coming through me. Okay, that has been spoken more than 2,000 years ago. And still people are being taught, are being preached, are, are you know, being told about Jesus Christ. And if you look at it, he's only, his ministry lasted for three years and he died a horrible death. And yet he's still being spoken about and he's being preached about. I mean, how many people do you know can do something like that? Not too many. Also, well, actually no one else. <laughs> he's the only one. Um, also, another thing about the word of God is it shows who we truly are as a species. We're prideful, we're arrogant, we're selfish. Out of any of the religious texts, the Word of God says that we cannot, we cannot clean ourselves with our own righteousness or our own good works. Unlike other religious texts, they tell us just do good. Do good and hopefully you might make it to heaven. Uh, feed the poor and you might make it to heaven. Um, you know, treat other people correctly and you might make it to heaven. But the Bible says clearly that no man can come to the Father without going through Jesus Christ. Plain and simple. Even in the Old Testament, uh, the Jews, and not just the Jews, but other people that knew about Yahweh, uh, El Shaddai, God, uh, knew that there had to be a price. There had to be a price to pay so you can come to the Lord. I mean, ancient Israel... Uh, had one person that would go into the Holy of Holies, which is basically where the Lord would manifest himself. And that person, which was a uh, descendant of Aaron, would sprinkle, um, you know, well, not sprinkle. He would go in with, uh, and he would go in with bells <laughs> because if they stop hearing the bells, then that means that he's dead because he wasn't clean in the eyes of the Lord. Now, the reason why he'll go in there is because every year, um, all of Israel will get together and put basically their sins upon this one, one animal. Once that happens, the lead priest or the high priest will go into, this one guy will go into the Holy of Holies where the tabernacle was at, and he will just, you know, walk around and pray for the nation of Israel. And yes, he had bells on, okay? But, unlike any other religious text, unlike any other religion out there, um, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was a God that always, always told told it how it is. He, he never hid his servant's sin from the audience or from the reader. You know, that's one, one good example of, you know, that... We as an audience, we as a reader can see that God does not have favoritism and God is a righteous God because he will not, he will not, not at all um, hide the sin. He won't. Uh, it is said that he is a light and he exposes the sin of each and every one of us. His word is a mirror and it shows who we are. And Moses was a murderer. King David was an adulterer, murderer, and also not the best uh, father figure out there. <laughs> Peter had a horrible temper. Judas Iscariot betrayed his own king, his own Messiah. Samson was Samson, a prideful, arrogant, selfish individual. And the list goes on. You know about Adam and Eve. Everybody knows about Adam and Eve. You know, 
they uh, they basically turned their back on God for just well to be like him or they were deceived because they thought they might be like God because of what Satan told them but even though we see the heart of man but we also see the heart of a God that cares about his creation and yes and yes a lot of people will say well what about all of the things that Israel did okay you have to understand we live in a broken world you know nobody's perfect and we're gonna mess up and there's other people that use the Word of God so they can mess up or they can get away with sin but unlike the human race God cannot be fooled and God will always always expose the sin of each and every one of us no matter what and he does it not because he wants to point and laugh at us he does it because he wants us to realize that we have sin and that we need him now as a follower of Jesus Christ uh, it hasn't been peaches and cream it really hasn't I mean when I read from Genesis to Revelation and uh, I read about Isaiah I read about Jeremiah I read about um, Zechariah, I read about um, Saul of Tarsus, Paul, who wrote the epistles, who also wrote about uh, the book of Romans. And some people are saying, some scholars say, that he also wrote Hebrews. But I, when I read about them, you never see what we see now in the church. About blessings and blessings and blessings. You always see that there was a battle. There was uh, uh, trials and tribulations. There were things that the servants of the Lord had to go through so they can mature and grow in the Lord and also so the glory of God can go forward. His kingdom can be preached and can spread. I mean, I'm not saying that by you watching this video, you're going to become a Christian. And by you... Um, you know, reading the Bible, you're going to become a Christian. No, what I'm saying is, if this truly isn't the Word of God, then why has it lasted this long? I mean, seriously. So many people nowadays believe that everything that the Bible says is a lie. It's a legend, it's myths, it's nonsense. But if it's so much of a nonsense, why is it still changing people's lives? Why is it that... Um, it hasn't been erased from history. I mean, to me, it's like you look at other the religions that came or that has uh, existed, majority of them have been forgotten, have been erased. But uh, yes, thank you for your time. Uh, zero one, as always. And if you want to hear more about uh, not just the word of god but other things that i'm going to be bringing subscribe and also um you can put down any comments you want but please be responsible and let those comments be constructive don't well come on you know just be responsible thank you